Hi, I'm Pastor Dawn. Welcome to worship with the family of South Cayuga Community Church for the week of Sunday, August the 29th. We're delighted that you have chosen to join us for worship here on YouTube, and we look forward to worshiping in person, hopefully very soon, in a couple of weeks on Sunday, September the 12th. The land on which we worship is land that has been walked on, hunted on, and lived on for thousands of years. It is the traditional land of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe people, and it is with humility and respect that we give thanks that we are here, in this space where we are in touch with Creator who made it and who made us. May our worship honor the relationships that are celebrated and invited here. And may we always remember the story of the land, the people who lived here and the people who live here now, and the call to live with respect and thanksgiving. Welcome, dear friends. We each connect from our own homes, but we gather as one in the Spirit. And in that Spirit, we pray. Loving God, we open our hearts to you now in praise and thanksgiving. Some hopeful, some weary, some frustrated, some excited. Nudge a place within each of us to hear your voice and be moved to action. May this time of worship renew and refresh us, that we might go forth inspired to love your way. Our opening hymn is found in Voices United, number 530, All Beautiful, the March of Days. Reading today from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. There is a time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh, 
a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. Today's reflection is entitled Joy in the Sadness by Eric Medina. So just when I thought Pixar couldn't go and make a movie that was even more emotional, they make an entire film that is literally about emotions. Well done, Pixar, way to go. It's as if Inside Out is aware it's a Pixar film. Even the movie's trailer made a reference to all of the past Pixar movies. Seriously, go watch the first teaser trailer for Inside Out. Regardless of what it is, Pixar really knows how to make their viewers cry. Darn it, Bing Bong. But Inside Out is a beautiful film that does indeed address the really heavy issues of sadness and depression while making the audience dig deep into their own feelings because that's what animated films are supposed to do, right? And to make things even more emotional than it already is, the film is accompanied by Michael Giacchino's minimalistic, hypnotic, and optimistic film score that digs right into the pit of your aiming dala. What already, that already sounds painful, but like Patrick once said to SpongeBob, Sometimes we have to go deep within ourselves to solve our problems. But in a world where we are always told to look our best and to put on a happy face, as the Joker would say, we tend to forget that it's perfectly fine to be sad. Most of the time, we see sadness as a burden, like the sty I had on my lower eyelid for a month. So we try to push it away, force ourselves to be happy, and pretend that no one is looking at the ugly red blotch on your face, but you know they are. Anyway, unlike joy, anger, fear, or disgust, sadness is an uncontrollable emotion that forces itself outward when we don't want it to, which is why, in the film, sadness can't seem to figure out why she keeps touching everything and turning things blue. So when some people think of the Bible, they tend to think of it as a book of joy, miracles, love, angels, and big stories with big characters. But some people may not realize that the Bible is filled with stories and characters who dealt with plenty of sadness, depression, hopelessness, pain, and loss. We're familiar with a lot of these characters. Moses, David, Jonah, Joseph, Job, Ruth, Mary Magdalene, Jeremiah, and even Jesus. Each of these people dealt with some sort of sadness, but in their time of sadness, they were able to find joy and even a bigger purpose for themselves. For this though, I'm going to focus on one of my favorite characters, Jonah. In Inside Out, the main character, Riley, is forced to move away from her comfortable Midwestern city to the bustling and noisy city of San Francisco, California. While there, Riley is struggling to make friends and focus on her daily life, all while trying to be strong for her parents who are dealing with a lot of stress from the post move. With Riley feeling unloved and unheard, she decides it would be best if she just simply ran away from home, in which she does. Typical pre-teen angst, right? So Riley steals her mom's credit card and hops on a bus headed back to her hometown. While on the bus, Riley has a change of heart as she is overcome with nostalgic memories of her family and childhood. She has made a mistake. 
She realizes that her family is more important than her personal and selfish feelings and chooses to head back home where she runs into the open arms of her parents. Her feelings of sadness and loneliness don't just magically go away, but at least she knows she has a family to always go to in times of trouble. In the book of Jonah, we learn that Jonah was told by God to travel to another island, to another land, Nineveh, to preach the word of God. Nineveh was like San Francisco to Jonah. It was a place that was dirty, gritty, and lost in its ways. It probably had less of a homeless problem though and less street poop. And according to Jonah, it was a hopeless place. But as Rihanna would say, shine a light through an open door. It was definitely out of Jonah's comfort zone and he didn't want any part of it. Jonah was like, screw them. They're on their own. No one can save them. So instead, Jonah ran away from God to a more comfortable location called Tarshish. This would be like Riley's old hometown in the Midwest. Tarshish was easier to preach to. People there would listen and accept the word of God. It was Jonah trying to find the easy way out. Also, I did a little Google search on the name Tarshish. It means contemplation, examination. Ironically, the journey to comfortable Tarshish would be a time of contemplation and examination for Jonah. Just as Riley hopped onto a bus, Jonah grabbed a boat and sailed the seas with a few other sailors headed in the same direction. After a big storm and being swallowed by a giant fish, Jonah began to comp contemplate and examine the grace and love God had toward him. Because of this, he decided to put aside his selfish feelings and travel to Nineveh to preach the word of God to the city. Though the story of Jonah leaves on a cliffhanger, the city of Nineveh was saved and found joy due to Jonah's decision to say yes to an uncomfortable situation. In Inside Out, we learn that life is sometimes uncontrollable and we have to do certain things we don't always like, whether it's moving to a new town or dealing with life's unfairness. We learned that Jonah had to do a task that he wasn't too comfortable with, but later realized that not everything is about him. He learned that he was part of a bigger picture, but he needed God to show him. Most of the time, we can't see the bigger picture that God has in store for us, but rest assured, there is a bigger picture and God is with us through every twist and turn. May the quiet ring of the prayer bowl bring us to a quiet place of prayer. Let us pray. Praise to you, ever-loving God, who provides abundant blessings. We bow in silence before you. Praise to you, O God, for we remember that you answer the prayers of the people. We give thanks for abundant blessings. Praise to you, O God, for your goodness, which sustains and waters the earth, blessing its growth. We give you thanks for abundant blessings. Praise to you, O God, for your healing love. We bring before you all who suffer and all who struggle under afflictions. We give you thanks for abundant blessings. Praise to you, O God, for you forgive us our sins and give hope to all the ends of the earth. We give thanks for your abundant blessings. Praise to you, beloved God of mercy and healing. You know the joys and sorrows of all people. You know the wisdom
whispers of our hearts, we bow in silence before you. O God of our salvation, remembering that you receive the prayers of all people, this we pray through in the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, our helper. Let us bind our prayers together in the words Jesus taught, our heavenly parent, our mother, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is found in Voices United, number 703, In the Bulb There is a Flower. Jesus Christ this day and every day. 